Okay, as promised, here's part two for your lower back. So when people who've had back spasm or a disc bulge or some sort of back pain issue where they are not able to flex, so they've been sort of locked in extension, they're doing everything like this and they need to bend. Part one, I showed you how to work on all the mobility to get you moving, get you bending, but you've got to sort of lock that in and get your core and your back working to sort of stay out of spasm. So before we were sort of getting out of spasm, getting it looser, now I've got to stay out of spasm. Now, don't get me wrong, this is after really acute stuff. So it's not when you're absolutely totally locked up and you can't move and you've got to try and move just to get out of bed. This is more like I can move, but I'm still a little bit nervous and ginger. I've got my flexion back and I can sort of bend, but every now and again, I might get a little jab of pain, but then I carry on. So this is for you guys who are getting their flexion back and you need to do core work, the essential stuff. And there's another thing, don't get me wrong about, it's not big time core work. This is a little mixture of low level stuff and a little bit of activation work to sort of switch everything back on, keep you stable. That's the biggest thing. Keeps you out of spasm, keeps you out of pain, and then you can go back to your core program or your Pilates or your core strengthening in the gym after that. Okay, so there's four things I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna give you a little progression, sort of plus and minuses if you like, depending on where you are at in your rehab or your recovery, but also what level you're at. So, for your first one, I'd, if you've done your stretches, okay, you've got your extension back, got your flexion back, the first thing you wanna work on is trying to work on activating deep inner core work like transversus and challenging with a knee float, okay? Now what that does, switches all this back on because you'll probably find when you have back pain, this just turns off, okay? Your core just goes boof and goes out and distends. We've got to turn that back on. That'll give you that support messaging for your back so your back stops spasming so much. So you do that, lying down. It's pretty easy, you're probably used to lying down if you've had a bit of back pain. Get into this comfortable position, what we call crook lying, okay? So knees bent, feet on the floor, relax, right? This position here is what you've got to focus on first. Don't have yourself arched up. Don't have yourself flattened. Have yourself halfway in between. That's your neutral, okay? Now, what I tend to do is for referencing, to stop you doing this sort of movement, which is what we've got to try and stop happening, is you put so your third finger on the top of your pelvis where that bony point is, that's your ASIS, then your thumb on your ribs. What you're trying to do is make sure those two positions don't increase or decrease because if they're decreasing, you're sort of crunching down and, and flattening your back. If they're increasing, you're letting go and you're arching your back. So these two points give you sort of a, a visual, okay, what am I supposed to keep as a normal, right? Now, from this point here, you're gonna do a knee float, which is simply that movement. Now, if you do that without thinking about it, you're just gonna lift that, probably lift, arch your back and roll your pelvis a bit. So it's not just about, oh, I just wanna float my legs. It's about, that's the challenge. The object is to tighten this. We have gotta tell our brain, switch on your deep abdominals down here. You can assist that with a bit of pelvic floor. So if you are, not sure how to activate your pelvic floor, go look at one of my other videos on that. But as a sort of helper, what I'd think about doing is trying to gently hold a wee. That'll give you a bit of pelvic floor, which assists in activating your transverse abdominals down here, gives you that sort of tightness here. I don't want you pushing out, right? So you don't bulge it out like that. You don't try and break and brace and hold breath. That's for when you're lifting something heavy. We're trying to get out of back pain. So you don't hold your breath ever with this. You've got to breathe through. So breathing happens here, tightness happens here. So you've got to think, if I'm here, I'm going to hold a wee. Now, the thing is, you can't see much what I'm doing here, but I can feel it. And if you're doing this home, you can feel it. As you can play around and say, okay, is this muscle tight? Okay, not floppy and loose. Is it tight? Okay, and can I breathe? If I can't breathe and talk, if I can't talk and keep this on, you're holding your breath. So if you do this, you're holding your breath. So try and practice just for this, is go, okay, fingers here, so you're not gonna move. Keep it solid, think, can I hold on a bit of pelvic floor, keep it tight? Okay, I've got it, right? And this will form the basis of the other three exercises you're doing anyway. So if you get this one right, you're gonna be in a good place for the next three. Then what you've gotta do, here's a challenge. 
Can you, with your left leg, slowly lighten this leg up and lift your heel off the ground like that without anything moving here and you not holding your breath? Then you slowly put it down. Then you can you transition without shifting. Can you transition to the other leg and lift that up? Now what that's doing is providing external movement of load for you to go, how do I brace a little bit? Not brace, but brace a little bit with the assistance of pelvic floor to keep my stability and all these muscles turned on so my back's happy. Okay, how can I do that? The challenge is raising your leg and they'll give you a load. All right? Remember, when you move your leg, your hip flexor goes through into your lower back as well. All right? So if you lift your leg and you do that, okay, it's going to affect your lower back. So just make sure that you're really trying to make sure this moves and my back and my core do not move. All right? And all you're going to do for this level is lift one leg at a time. All right? For those of you, if we say go to negative, for those of you that are getting sore, if you'd raise it, you go, oh, I feel my back a bit. What you want to do maybe is just not lift it off the ground. Just turn on and lighten the leg, like almost lift your heel, and think and think about raising this, and you'll notice when you think about it, I'm trying to lighten this, and you actually do lift it a bit, but not all the way. So maybe I would take about 50% of weight out of this leg. I naturally have to switch on here to do it, because I'm prepping myself to stabilize. And then you go down, and then this leg, 50% of weight out of this leg, and you'll feel yourself working a few muscles to try and how to figure out how do I stabilize my pelvis so it doesn't shift and roll like that. That's your spinal stability. Okay, that's what you're after. So if you can do that, maybe 50% lifts, then you'll progress to the full 100% lifts. Now, if you're getting better at that and you want to progress for the people who need a plus on that, you can go one leg up and then you've got to try and make sure that your tummy doesn't move and raise the other leg up which gives you more load, more challenge, more activation, but you're not allowed to do that, obviously it gives you pain. One leg down, and one leg down. That's your tabletop knee float. So they're your sort of progressions for that. So that's the first one I'll do. Absolutely do your first one. Maybe work on three sets of 10, something like that, okay? Just enough to make it feel good. Maybe spend sort of three or four minutes doing that. Then you need to go on a bird dog. So it's sort of like the opposite, if you like. We were doing knee floats there, challenging this. Now we know how to activate this. We're going to use that to then make the back muscles do a job of spinal stability so they get out of spasm. Think of like if back muscles are in spasm and they're wanting to grab all the time, every time you move, you give them a stability job to do, almost your brain forgets about the spasm part and then that helps you improve in the short term. Okay, so a bird dog is your next bet thing. I would go four point. All right, one, two, three, four. Hands directly under shoulders, knees directly under hips, okay? This point here, again, think of the neutral spine. You don't want to be sagged down into here. You don't want to be rounded into here, okay? You want to be in a neutral position. So if you look in the mirror, okay, where's my back? I want it flat, all right? From that position there, you're going to do this movement, all right? However, most people just go straight off and just go, boom, straight into it and they actually shift, and I'll show you what I mean if I go this way. You watch my hips, what I don't want happening is that movement, okay? Now, I've moved my pelvis over to the right, and I've done that to put my center of gravity over my knee, so I don't have to use my core to stabilize through my arm. What I want you to do is not do that. So your best to do maybe look in the mirror and see, am I shifting my pelvis left or right, okay? The best way to sort of start off is, well, just raise your arm first. Remember the core's on here like you did before. Can I just raise my arm? That's your sort of minus one, okay? For those people who are shifting too much or if they do that, the back hurts, okay? So just raise your arm and you'll find, if you raise, even raising your arm, if you put your muscle here, because I've taken one hand away, I need more my back to connect from here to here more. So as soon as I take that arm away, my back muscles switch on, okay, which is exactly what I want. I want stability. Right? So even just doing that, you'll feel the loads are here, but you're actually your back muscles, you put looking back, oh, it's working. Okay? Now if you keep this on, it really makes it fire. So don't let that distend and go all floppy like that. Keep that on to keep that activated. So if you can raise your arm forward, make a fist. 
Right? The next best thing to do is raise is the opposite leg. But I've got to think, if I'm going to shift this leg, I don't want to shift my pelvis. So I need to use my core a little bit more to connect this hand through my core and my back to that leg. So it's a, like a bridge. All right, so I'm going to raise that arm, and then I just go simply slide out the back to there. Okay, make a fist, push your heel, push away from the floor, hold it for 10 seconds at a time, and then both down together. That's one on one side. You're aiming for 10 seconds on that side, 10 seconds on the other side. You're trying to get at least four of those done. I've probably even got eight or 10 of those. Okay, so there's sort of 20 if you like. And then 10 seconds long. You need the 10 seconds to generate enough contraction for a long enough period of time to stop the spasm part. All right, and give you some feedback of stability and challenge you in trying to work out how do I balance between my left and my right. All right, now you probably find one side's better than the other, and it could be the painful side, it could be just the fact that you're left or right handed. So if I'm here, you may find one side you're doing well, and the other side you're going, oh, I'm all over the shop. And then you go to the other side and you're going, actually, I'm really good that side. So try and use the good side to help you with the bad side. But that, again, like the first one, is essential. They're the first two I'd always go for. Now, for, like I said, for people who are struggling with pain, they say, yeah, but when I do a bird dog, my back hurts. Well, just do the arm raise or just do the leg out the back. But you, what you could do is slide the leg. So if you, you just could just do the arm raise part and you do, say, four of those, all right, each side. Then you do the leg part. Now, if you do the leg and it still hurts, keep it connected with the ground. Okay, so from here, keep your core on and just slide your leg backwards. And you'll notice that that back muscle's working. You put your hand on there, okay, it's working there, okay? It's not much, but there's no point you trying to do a full bird dog and be in pain. So you're, you're better to go back and do less, well, it's not doing much, yeah, but you're not in pain, it's keeping you out of pain, so do that. Then you'll probably find as you improve, you can go, oh, now I can raise my leg, oh, now I can raise my arm. And then you can do a full bird dog, then you get that stability benefit, all right? So, you know, if plus or minus, do that. After the full bird dog, it goes into harder things like um, using bands. But for this sort of acute back pain episode, just worry about the minuses. Do you do an arm, or do you do a leg, or do you do the full? All right? So there's your first two, absolute essentials. Once you get through those two, okay, if you, like you don't do the next one unless you can do those two. So do those two first, then you're onto a plank. Now for planks, normal planks is too high level. Okay? And that's, to be honest, that's back in the gym, getting strong with abdominals. We're after back pain, okay? We want to get rid of the back pain so activation is the key. What I would do is planks, front plank, simple stuff on your knees. Now that's not, it's gonna, you're gonna do it the way we do it, is making sure you've got your transversus on, bit of pelvic floor and glutes. So we're teaching your brain stability in all areas, not just how well you can hold your rectus and obliques on, okay? That's a normal plank. So we won't want the load too heavy. We actually want it quite light. Hence, go onto your knees. So I just go slowly down onto your elbows, push your knees back. So when you look in the mirror, your pelvis is in the right position. So if I look in the mirror here, I don't want to be in there. I don't want to be arched, okay? I don't want to be sort of rounded all the way out with the bum tucked in. I want to be flat and I want my sort of hip joint, the same height as my shoulder joint. So just make sure you're not sort of sunk down like this or your, your bum's not in the air sort of thing. Okay, so come down. You don't want to be sagging into here. It's, it's quite hard to find the right position. But simply holding yourself there, you have to use a few abdominals. Okay, what I want you to do is not just rely on your rectus abdominis and your obliques to hold you there. I want pelvic floor on. So you're tightening and bracing lower down here. So you've got a little bit of transversus and a bit of pelvic floor to assist in the pain relief spasm part. And then what you're trying to do at that point here is turn these suckers on. So you've got a little bit of glute clench without doing a pelvic tilt. Okay, so don't do so much buttock clenching that you're doing this, okay, because you're coming out of position. Stay in your neutral and a little bit of glute clench. And the way you can do that is think about your knees. If you're pushing in with your knees, push them out a little bit. Okay, so you're like you're doing external rotation, you'll get a bit of buttock. So a little bit of buttock, 30% of buttock, 30% of pelvic floor, and then you've got your abdominals, your rectus abdominis and your obliques working to give you that you know, big outer bracing, which the back will love. Okay, and that's the road back to doing core. All right? It's the road back to doing proper planks, other things like dead bugs, it's getting things switched on. So <clears throat> when you, you can go back and do those and not get a sore back. So it's a bit of a double whammy. You think, this is the third exercise, 
you're after helping you with back pain, but then also a pathway into how do I get back doing my core work that I love, okay? So that's the pathway. Can you do a plank? Be humble, do it on your knees, don't try to do it on your feet. Now, the minus part of that, if that is too hard, if you sit there and go, my back bit hurts a bit when I'm, even when I'm on my knees, okay, you need to then not be so horizontal. So what I would do is then use a bench. If this is in the gym, use a bench. You can just do this at home. This can be your sofa, okay? So now what you do is you just do it there, okay? And that's like half the load as I just did before. So think of being on your knees as about half the load of you being on your feet. This, is, this feels like about half the load of me being, being here. So this, easily, easily half the load. So maybe 50% of that. And so you can go there. And you feel like, well, I'm not doing much. But you'll notice that, yes, I am. I am doing quite a bit here. You just don't feel like you're doing a workout. But again, like I said before, we're after back pain. So we're after getting rid of that by switching on here. You just got to do the time. You'd be quite surprised. You know, you hold this for a minute. These ones are about a minute long. Maybe sort of three or four sets of them. You'd be quite surprised how good this is. You've just got to make sure, don't forget about pelvic floor, TA, buttocks. Don't have it floppy. Turn them on a bit, okay, without doing a massive pelvic tilt. Okay, keep it neutral, turn it on. That'll work wonders. All right. So if you got through the third one of that, okay, and your things are still going well, things are feeling better, then your last one will be a side plank. Now the side plank is that sort of we're getting closer and closer to doing core work. The side plank though is almost well, basically harder core work, but we are doing it for our QL spasm in here. There's that muscle there that always gets knotty and tight, it's really sore, and you want it massaged out. That's the one we're trying to tackle. Plus, we're getting a little bit of obliques in there as well. So I find it's essential as long as you're up for it, okay? As long as your back is ready for it. If it's not, I'll give you some minuses to try. But I would definitely try and put this in as your fourth one if you can get it because it would be awesome for you. What you do, it is the same as the front plank on your knees, but we're doing it on our side, side plank, all right? In here, you're doing this movement here, okay? Into there. Now... Making sure when you do this though, that your knees stay together, your elbow, you know, for some people who have shoulder problems, they might not like this, but you need to look after your shoulder, but you also need to use your shoulder as a post. This hand needs to come around the back of that shoulder. Think about pulling it forward and then you fight and pull that back. When you do that, your lat will engage, that lat is gonna connect through your lumbar, through your fascia, into your buttock, then your back stability kicks in. So you're also teaching your brain about stability using outer muscles and fascia, okay, and cross slings at the back, which is gonna lead you into things like being able to do deadlifts and all that sort of stuff and lifting. It also helps you with the walking. You probably find that most people who have back pain, they, their walking helps them, so it's gonna help you with the walking movement. This here, there, and then thrust through like a squat or a deadlift, push through your knees, push through your elbow and your forearm to arrive there. So I should be in a bit of a straight line through here, I don't want to be sitting backwards, I want to be extended through the hips, but not extended through the back, and this needs to really stay on. Okay, so I need on here and maximal buttocks now. So before it was a little bit of buttocks, now it's really switching on your buttocks, so you're really engaging those, back should be happy. This is about how much fatigue we get here. I don't want back pain, I want fatigue, like, oh my God, I can feel my side really working here, and it's getting more and more and more but you've got to keep it below your back pain. Okay, fatigue, whatever you can handle, and then once you feel like, oh, it's gonna to get too much, then you sit down, relax, straight to the other side, okay? So don't do three times on one side, just swap. By the time you're done this side, you're giving this side a rest, it's ready to go again, okay? Again, you're gonna find, if you've had back pain on one side, you're gonna find, get yourself in position, brace through there, and here, you're going to find one side might be easier or harder than the other, all right? Then don't forget, core of this, all right? So pelvic floor, bit of transversus activation. So you're trying to feel like, okay, this is tight through here, but I'm still breathing, right? You'll work your obliques definitely on more on this side than this side, and your curl on more on this side than that side. And trying to keep that shoulder back, buttocks on. A lot to think about with this one. This is quite technical, but so good for your back spasm, okay? But like I said, you've got to be able to handle it. For those of you who sort of can't handle that, as far as you may find the knees is too much load, okay, you get a bit of sharp pain or anything like that, you can again do what I did before. 
that way. Okay, and you go, guys, like half of those. Exactly, but you notice, hey, it's still on there. All right, so even though you don't feel like you're doing a workout, you are activating and doing some great things for your back, and your back will thank you for it. And remember, these are all designed to get you out of that pain, keep it out while you keep doing your stretches, and give you that sort of segue or vehicle to go back to the gym, do your core work, then that will give you, you know, the opportunity to do your squats and devs or whatever you're doing or your sport. And that's that little pathway that we, we want you to follow. So see how that goes for you. Give that a shot. We'll see you next time.